Hi everyone, this is Flo. And this is Jesse. We're here at the Tank Museum Bovington in England. And just before we came here, we went to the movies. What did we watch? And we watched 1917. And we were excited to watch it. A great war movie, finally. Yeah, we don't get big budget World War I movies anymore all the time. And you out there in YouTube land were also pretty excited about it and asked us about our opinion and kind of like a do a small review thing. And that's what we're doing with this video. So the movie 1917 surprisingly takes place in 1917. They got that right. Yeah, let's, they, let's give them that. Yeah. Specifically, it takes place on, I think, uh, two days, uh, 6th and 7th April 1917. Yeah. Um, the context for the plot is that the Germans are just retreating in Operation Alberich. They're retreating towards their newly built defenses on the so-called Siegfriedstellung. Uh, the Hindenburg Line in English. Yeah, later dubbed that. And the main characters of the movie need to deliver an urgent message to a battalion that is moving forward with the, uh, behind the Germans, basically. But uh, that's not all that happened in April 1917, right? This is true, actually. The, the context is kind of an interesting one that they chose. So a few days after the movie is set on April 9th, the British launch a big offensive in the region. Plus, on April 6th, that very day that the action is supposed to start, uh, the US declares war on Germany. So this is kind of a pretty neat uh, context. In addition, April 1917 was known as Bloody April, uh, specifically by the Allied Air Forces. Since that month, the Germans had introduced a new type of aircraft, which gave them a technical advantage in the air. Yeah, the Albatross fighter, which ironically we later in the movie see crashing down. But I was quite pleased that they uh, took the correct aircraft in that scene. And that, I think, brings us to one of the things that I think we should talk about first in that movie, which is production design. And, you know, the term historical accuracy gets thrown around a lot. Uh, I think one of these uh, things that, it, that usually encompasses is production design, meaning costumes, sound, weapon handling, kind of like how the actors... Sets. Sets kind of thing. And I think that's the really the strongest part of the movie and I think that kind of sets a very very high bar for future war movies in general because they got it as far as we can tell really really right here. I mean if you're watching this movie you're not going to get a big history lesson on the war as a historical event but you are going to get an emotional impression of what the combat was like, what the soldiers' experience was like. And a lot of that, I think, is due to the success they had in, in this area. For example, I really like the way that they portrayed the trenches, uh, the way that they were designed, the difference between the British trenches, which are a bit less well dug and supported, and the prepared yeah. sort of reinforced German trenches. Uh, that, that was something that reflected the historical reality and that it, they did a good job visually with that as well. Yeah, and it was even down to things like uh, these street signs uh, for the uh, different sectors along the trenches, which were used by the, by the soldiers actually back then. The There's one scene in the movie where uh, one, so the, one of the protagonists asks where he can find this or this unit and he says, well, I need to go down that street. The street, there isn't a street anymore, but it's you know, one part of the trench that has a neat little street sign. And I think that, yeah, that was very cool. Yeah. Uh, the uniform details were very well done, um, like, you know, even down to the webbing and kind of the rifles. They paid, like, in one of the shooting scenes, they paid attention to uh, the clip size of the... Uh, the, the Lee Enfield. The Lee Enfield yeah. rifle. And, uh, yeah, that, that was all very, very good. So I think um, if you watch that, you get a very good impression. And it, it's not all just trenches in the movie, actually. That's true, they're up and out of the trenches uh, for much of the movie. So they also show us uh, some other aspects of the Western Front that we don't always see. It wasn't all mud and trenches. No. When the front did move from time to time, uh, soldiers did see green fields or villages that still had buildings standing, at least to some extent in this case. Uh, so I thought that was a nice touch as well. Although one of the sacrifices that they yeah, had to make... That was, that was very obvious. Yeah, one of the sacrifices they had to make to sort of keep us with the soldiers, going along with them and keep the impression of a one-shot uh, film. In real which, time, in real time. Right, which it wasn't officially, but they, they give that feeling to you, was that they had to compress the space. Quite, so, quite, quite significantly. Quite significantly. So it, you really get the impression that there's the British front line, there's a bit of no man's land, and there's a German front line. Then you're behind the German lines where their artillery used to be, and then you're off into the untouched area behind. 
And so uh, in real life, this would be kilometers deep. But in the movie, we get the impression that they've covered it in a very short period of time. Yeah, and th that's like kind of the things where this continuous shot thing, I think, didn't make much sense, sense because, you know, you're just skewing the thing. I mean, a Brit the British defense system had three lines. The German trench system had three lines at least. Uh, kind of thing. So uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't really sure about that. I think the movie could have just, you know, worked with some continuous scenes like walking through the trenches kind of thing and then just make a cut. I don't think it would have taken away from the urgency that the movie had um, and everything. But, you know, as I said, general, as an impression from the costumes and everything, you really get a good feeling for the British Army, uh, the diversity also in the British Army from, you know, all the kinds of troops, different axes, some Indian soldier and everything. I think that they do that very, very well. But one of the um, criticisms I would have about the movie, and I think that comes a lot from setting such a high bar for the portrayal of the British soldiers, yeah. I think is where the movie falls flat a bit is the portrayal of the German army, the German soldiers. Yeah, that's true. I mean, for one thing, it's okay, the German is the enemy. It's not necessary for the objective of the film to really develop the German characters that much the way that they do with the British, even though they are able to achieve that with some of the British soldiers who are on camera for a very short period of time. But it seems like every scene where there's a German, that is a, it's a, it's a one-trick pony. The German is there to kill, even if he's dying himself, even if there's other different mitigating circumstances. Every German whose face we really see is just bent on one thing. And that's not really an accurate historical reflection. I mean, yes, war is about killing, but people are not killing machines 100% of the time when they're in war. And there wasn't really a need to show that to the degree that they did. Uh, they could have just had the Germans as a more neutral presence if they wanted to yeah, focus on the British experience. Maybe right? like in the movie Dunkirk where you don't For see example, the German soldiers yeah. at all. Uh, that would have been a way to go, to go. And I think also with the historical accuracy and like the weapons handling and everything, there are so, some accuracies uh, like shooting the Gewehr 98 from the hip kind of thing. Yeah, that's and not your best choice if you're a German infantryman trying to shoot from the hip. So I, I think, again, this comes from the very high bar they set with the British army. And I think, I mean, I'm German. For me, it comes also from the fact that I know there will never be a high budget German World War I movie. So I'm kind of always crossing my fingers uh, that uh, the- We're still hoping. That the, that the portrayal of the German army in a British, British uh, American movie is also accurate because that's uh, how far we will get uh, on that front. So uh, yeah, in conclusion, what would you say? I would say um, the film is definitely worth watching. I think yeah. it does a great job of conveying the ground eye view, the soldier's eye view of an experience. It gives you that feeling. That's what a movie is for. It's not a, it's not a history documentary. And we're not trying to judge it by that standard. So I think on the whole, even with the weaknesses that we mentioned, um, like that also the Germans can't seem to hit a target. They're like stormtroopers from Star Wars and not stormtroopers from the German yeah. Imperial <laughs> Army. So notwithstanding those things, uh, I like the film. I was really glad to see a great war movie get the attention that it has. And if you haven't seen it yet, obviously we've kind of spoiled much of it for you, but go see it anyway. It's worth it. Yeah. And if you want to have a real deep dive where we talk like over an hour about a lot of these scenes and take it a bit apart and kind of thing, uh, we recorded a podcast episode for our Patreon supporter podcast. The episode is free to listen for everybody. Uh, just follow the link in the video description, uh, click the link and you can also, I think, download the audio file, uh, listen to it wherever you want and uh, let us know what you think about the movie. Bye. We'll see you in the next episode.